Hello guys, welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to delineate catchments or watersheds using a DEM. Now as you can see I have already loaded up the DEM into my working space and we are using ArcGIS for this, specifically ArcMap component of ArcGIS. For this process I'm going to use the spatial analyst tool of ArcMap. So just make sure that uh, you have activated the spatial analyst tools by going to customize and going to extensions and over here you can see the different extensions that you can either activate or deactivate and from here you can see that i have already activated my spatial analyst tool well the spatial analyst extension which i'll be using for this tutorial so after you have done that you can simply go to this arc toolbox let me try to fit this one into the side of our window over here and from here I'm going to go to Spatial Analyst Tools and there's an option called Hydrology. Now under this we have a couple of options actually that we can explore. Now first of all depending on the source that you download your DEM data from you might or might not actually need to fill it to cater for the imperfections or potential inaccuracies uh, due to the presence of uh, voids in the DEM. And this fill tool can actually correct those potential errors. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill my DEM so I'm going to double click this and I can simply drag this and drop it over here. And the output raster, I'm going to name it as fill.tiff. All right, after that, I'm going to click OK. And now you can see that we have a filled out raster. So I can get rid of my original raster for the time being because for everything that will be doing from now on, I'll be using this filled out raster. So even I can actually get rid of this one just completely. And the second step is I would like to calculate the flow direction. So I'm going to go to this tool. And after that, I'm going to use my input raster to be this filled out raster. And as my flow direction, I'm going to name this one as flowdir.tiff and click OK. And before we move on to the next step, just a quick note, as you can see on the screen, these different numbers actually mean something. Now you can see on the side that each of these different directions are actually assigned a specific number and those numbers actually correspond with this set of numbers that you can see over here. So for example, you can see that whenever we have number one, that means the flow direction is actually towards the east. And if you have 16, that means the flow direction is towards the west. So that's basically the meaning of this raster. And the third step that we have to follow is the flow accumulation. So now we are going to calculate the flow accumulation simply by opening up this tool. And my input is going to be the flow direction raster. And I'm going to drag this and drop it over here. And let me name the flow accumulation raster as flowacc.tiff. We are still going to maintain the same file extension and click OK. All right, now you can see another raster called flow accumulation raster. And if you just pay attention to these numbers that you see over here, you can see that the numbers are actually varying from zero all the way up to 379, 185. So the meaning of this number specifically is that if you try to locate the cell which has the maximum flow accumulation, then this is the real number of cells that has actually been drained into that particular cell. Now we can make some changes to the appearance of this. Now if you go to properties, for example, if you go to symbology, and if I select classified, and instead of having five classes, I'm going to have just only two classes. And I will open up classify over here. And from here, you can see that we have a different representation for different uh, ranges of numbers. For example, let's say from zero up to about 5000. Well, I can change that number directly from here as well. I'm going to represent that particular range of numbers in black color and the rest all the way up until the maximum number. I'm going to represent that in white color. Now, again, I'll explain to you guys what each of these numbers actually mean. But for the time being, let's just go ahead and have a look at how that looks. If I click apply. Now you can see that the streamlines actually quite, quite clear, isn't it? Now what this range of numbers mean is that if 5,000 or more cells are draining into a particular cell, then that particular cell is going to get represented in white color in this case. Now in reality, 
These kinds of areas basically refer to streamlines or river lines. So that's what basically it means. And if you would like to have a bit of a dense river network, all you have to do is decrease this number. Let's say we'll put about 2500. And you can see that slightly the density of the, of the river network in this case as what it appears to be increased. So that's something actually you guys can play around in order to either increase or decrease the density of your river network. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And now if I zoom in, you can see the continuation of the river lines just like this. Now as you can see, there are actually rivers which are belonging to different orders. Now for this tutorial, just to demonstrate to you guys how to create a watershed or how to create a catchment, uh, let me just go ahead and select maybe one particular network of rivers. Alright, so I'm going to assume that my catchment demarcation is basically going to be based on this particular drainage outlet over here. So before we move forward with that idea, we have to create a new shapefile to tell ArcMap that we are going to specify a cell somewhere over here and we are going to select that cell to be my drainage outlet. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to create a point shapefile simply by going over to my working folder which is this catchment demarcation. Right click and go to a new shapefile and I'm going to name this one as outlet point and the coordinate system that I'm working in right now is geographic coordinate reference system so I'll select WGS 1984 and after that I can click OK and now you can see that we have the outlet over here let me go ahead and increase the size just a little bit and after that I'm going to right click over here and now I'm going to edit this so I will go to edit features and start editing and now you can see that this editor toolbar appeared right over here so I'm going to select this create features button and I'm going to select outlet from here and and under my construction tools point and now I'm going to zoom in and carefully I'm going to make sure that I put this point right on top of one of these cells yeah that looks fine and after that I can come back to my edit toolbar over here and click stop editing now even if you right click over here in your outlet uh, layer and if you open the attributes table you'll be able to see that we have one attribute which is the, the point that we just specified uh, just a couple of uh, seconds ago I guess. And that's pretty much it. Now we are, now we are actually able to tell ArcMap where to look for when it comes to the outlet point. So now we can directly use this watershed tool under the spatial analyst tools and as the input I have to select the the flow direction raster which we just uh, derived which is this one and I'm going to drag it and drop it over here and as the pore point that's actually going to be my drainage outlet and I'm going to drag it and drop it over here watershed dot tiff very important to make sure that the output will be still a tiff it's going to be a raster but later we can actually convert it into a, into a polygon with, without an issue and the pore point field at this particular stage we won't be needing care about this much so I'm good so I'm just going to uh, select ID because we basically have just one single ID and after that I can click OK yeah and as you can see the tool ran successfully and this is a generated watershed I'm going to right click over here in case if it appears to be in black color you can go to uh, let's say we can go to unique uh, values and we can create we can select a value that's not black maybe let, let's go with red and after that you can click OK and now you can see that it generated the watershed for us just like this now if I go to properties and increase the the transparency just a bit go to display and increase the transparency transparency to be about 50 percent you can see underneath the the network of the rivers isn't it so these edges that you see right over here are basically the the boundaries or local highlands which defines the catchment area for this particular river network all right so the next thing i think you guys might be interested to convert this into a polygon isn't it so for that we can search for raster to polygon tool and after that i can drag this and drop it over here and I'm going to name this one as watershed 
.shp. It's going to be a shape file, and I'm going to untick this simplify polygons because I guess you guys understand that the boundaries are actually formed along the boundaries of the pixels. And if you untick this, it won't be simplifying those polygons. Now I'll show this to you guys uh, in a second. After that, we can click OK in order for the tool to run. You can see that the boundary has not been simplified. It's directly adopting the boundary of the pixel as, it, as its own boundary. And I'm all right with that. And once you have a polygon, you can actually do cool things like calculate the total drainage area or the total catchment area, which contributes to this particular point. But before you calculate areas, you have to make sure that you reproject this into a projected coordinate reference system because currently we are working in a geographic coordinate reference system, which is a WGS1984 geographic coordinate reference system, as you can see over here. But I'm going to keep that for another lesson. And I hope the steps of this tutorial was clear for you guys. And if you do have any questions, do not hesitate to add them down below in the comments box. And I'll get back to you guys as soon as possible. So thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in another one.